this is what we're building. I'm going to blow this up a little bit. Uh, I know that looks horrible, but just, just go with me here. Here's the ERD for what we're going to build. And we're going to talk about the OAuth thing and how to clone that template here in just a moment. But before we get that, I want to show you what we're building. We are going to build an app where users log in. This should look familiar because we've done this. This was in the, the OAuth lecture and just looks exactly the same as that. Um, a user is able to have multiple pets, but the pet or the owner is going to be referenced within the pet. So it's a little bit different than what we've seen before, but it's another perfect example of how referencing works. You'll notice here that this pet or the owner is not in an array. It's a singular object. So that means that one pet will have one owner, right? A user can have many pets, but only one pet can have one owner. So once the pet's created, its owner has been locked in, can't change. Um, the pet will also have comments embedded in it. So we're going to be referencing using our user, and we're going to be embedding using comments. So that's how our data model set up. Any questions on that? I'll, I'll pull this up again when we talk about setting up the models, but I just wanted to pull that picture up because I saw it on my desktop and thought I'd show it again. Okay. So why don't we start by talking about cloning the repository. Um, actually, that, that can live over here. The repo that we have set up for you to use is here. I want everyone to browse here. Copy. Paste. So I want everyone to browse there. Don't do anything yet with that. Just navigate to that. So what you're going to see is this, obviously. It's just a, a repository on GitHub, nothing scary. This is our template. It has everything we need for a basic uh, Mongo Express node stack app with OAuth. In order to make it work, we're going to clone it we're going to remove the Git information from it so that it's no longer a GitHub repository. And then we are going to add our own, or you can add your own later. You know how to add a, make a repo. Or we're just gonna remove it and we're gonna rename the directory so that when we clone this, it's not cloning into a directory called men stack OAuth template. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. In order to make this work, just like it says here, added .env with the following. I have all of this set up for this example. So you're not gonna to have to do any of that. But in the future, what you're gonna to need to do is if you wanna use this, you're gonna clone the repo to a different name. You're gonna remove the Git information. And then you're going to add this .env file. You're gonna to have to add your database URL. You're gonna to have to add your Google client, Google, Google secret. You're gonna configure those on your Google developer console. You're going to have to add that Google callback, which again, it's usually just localhost 3000 slash auth slash Google slash OAuth2 callback or whatever it was that we set uh, during that lesson. And it has to match whatever you set up in your Google OAuth, uh, or your developer console. And then your session secret, which can be anything you want. So as long as you add this .env file and install your node modules, this will work. It's very basic. Um, I used to provide a little bit more robust of a template, but um, people kept copying my nav bar and just changing the color. So David decided to make it really ugly so that no one would want to use it. So air high five, David. Okay. So what we're going to do is in order to clone a repo, we have to get the link for it, right? So I want everyone to click on code. Make sure that you're on HTTPS. And click on that little copy button. Okay, I'm going to click on SSH because I'm cool and I have that set up. But you're going to want to set that up HTTPS. Click on the little button. Now we're going to go over to our terminal. CD code. 
I'm going to put this in a temp directory because I already have a pet collector directory. Um, oh, you know what? I'll just call it pet collector code along. That works. So what we're going to do is we're going to type git clone. We're going to paste that link and we're going to put a space and we're going to type the name of what we want to call it when we clone it. So how about pet, I'm going to call it OAuth pet collector, pet collector. And you'll see what it does is it, it takes all of that stuff from GitHub, puts it into our local machine as OAuth pet collector. So if we CD into it, CD OAuth pet collector, you'll see right here that it's a repository, right? It's showing that because I have Z shell installed and it and on my Zosh and it's showing that it's a repository. If I want to make this not a repository, because I don't want all of the previous commit history and all that stuff in there, I'm going to type rm minus rf space dot git. And I, the reason that this works is because if you type ls, it gives you a directory listing, right? Lists all the contents of the directory, but that doesn't show you everything. ls ls dash a will show you that you've got a folder in there called dot git. That has all of your git information in it. And what we need to do is remove that. It's hidden. So normally when you initialize something as a git repo, you don't see that. But all of that information re re involving everything git related, uh, your initialization information, all your commit history, everything is in that directory. So we need to remove that. rm minus rf dot git. You're going to see when I do that, this goes away. This is no longer a repository now. So if you wanted to initialize it as a repository, you could do that. And then follow the steps you normally would to make that into a Git repository. Please don't not do that. Because if you don't do that, or if you, if you, if you don't do that step, you're going to have commits on your projects from David and I. Uh, because we made commits to this repo, this contributor. You're, we're going to be contributors on your project. You don't want that. You don't want your employers to see that your, you know, your instructors were submitting contributions to your project. So we've got that. We CD'd into it. We have to do npmi, right? That installs all the packages that are in our package.json. We also need to touch our .env file. And we can open it in VS Code. I'll bring this over here. So the .env file contents I'm going to share with you. I just want everyone to copy and paste this. If we had more time, I would walk you through the OAuth thing again, but no thanks. Uh, paste this in here for you. So just paste that into your .env file. And we're going to fire this sucker up. Open a terminal. Split it. Nodemon. Should see it connect. Let's fire it up, make sure it works. Hello, friend. This is what it looks like. So if your app looks like this, when you turn it in, we're, you're, we're gonna have a talk. Please don't let your app look like this when you turn it in. I don't wanna have that talk with any of you. Log in with Google. Log in and then it should say hello and then your username. That's it. That's how you clone a template and set up OAuth. It's a little bit more involved if you have to do the dev console thing, but all that work we did on uh, Monday with auth, all you have to do is the Google developer console part of it. You don't have to do any of that other work. Your config directory already has your passport stuff all set up. So you don't have to deal with that. It's take, it's getting your avatar for you. So you don't have to do that. It's got your user model set up. It has your auth routes set up. It's rendering just that single index page, which is right here. It has partial setup. So if you want to use your header and your footer, 
you've got those. Your header just has this simple nav bar in it. I wouldn't even call that a nav bar. <laughs> um, but that's it. Very, very simple, basic, easy to use, easy to configure. Does anybody have any questions on that before I move on to the, the fun stuff? The database URL, does that need to have, like, do we need to change the name uh, to our project name? You're going to need to change the entire string to your Atlas uh, okay. account and your project name. Please do not use this database string for your projects because okay. that's not your database to use. Don't be that person. Somebody in, that, in my last class was that person and they were shamed. They weren't shamed. Um, they were shamed. Wait, do we need they to were change that a little now bit. or for the project is what you're saying? You do not need to change that now. No, I want everyone to use the same thing so we can all see each other's data. Gotcha. Um, so the, the ENV that I sent you for this project or for this little app is exactly what you're going to use for right now. So don't worry about changing that for this. When you do your own projects, you're going to take that Atlas link. Remember when we go to Atlas? This is how you get that, just to be clear. You can, you can technically pull it from a previous project that you've done. Um, that's not going to work. Son of a bitch. All right, never mind. So what you're going to do to get your string, if you don't have it, is you're going to hit connect. You're going to click on connect your application, and there's your string. You, what you have to do is you have to replace this password with the two little uh, brackets. You replace your that with your password, and you replace this with the name of your database. You have to replace the carrots too, or else it's not going to work. So that gets replaced with the name of your database. If you look at the connection string right now, for the in the dot env that I gave you, you'll see that. You'll see that it has the username, which I'm pretty sure is average caribou. The password to that database, or medium-sized caribou, I don't, I don't know what caribou David decided to go with today. And then the name of the database, which I'm pretty sure is pet collector. But don't change any of that, because if you change the password, you're not going to be able to connect. And if you change the database name, you're not going to see any of the rest of the data that we see. But as has been mentioned in the past, if you have this connection string for your Atlas account that you've used in the past, all you have to do is copy it from a previous project and just change the database name because the rest of it's going to be always exactly the same. Okay, so that's Atlas. Quick question about yes. the OAuth. Um, outside of like Pet Collector, outside of our project, are you suggesting that we also just clone um, this Menstack OAuth template, just name it that exact same thing and save it to our own GitHub? What I would do, instead of doing that, you have this handy little button up here that says fork. Oh, okay. If you click on fork, you can fork it to any account that you have. I've already forked it because that's what you should do with these things. So technically, it's already on my GitHub. If I wanted to add it to this other GitHub that I'm a contributor to, I could click on that. Let's do that. I'm going to put it to David and Shark. You'll see that it forks it. So now I have that code on the David and Shark repo. It's also on my repo. So apparently we have that in three places now, David, sorry. But this still means that like when we clone it, we're still gonna have to take out the git, uh, the dot git file and everything. Okay. Yes. If you want to make your own, you can do that. And but that would be a way around doing that. You're still going to have to remove the Git info because your project's name is going to be uh, whatever it is that you've put it into your repo as. So it's you're going to put this up into GitHub with a, an appropriate name, right? It's going to be like OAuth template or something like that. And you're going to have to clone it to, or you want to get rid of that Git information and all that stuff associated with it. 
So you're going to want to remove the, the get info and then just reinitialize it. Gotcha. Okay, cool. Cool. So this is what we've got, right? Let me show you what we're shooting for. What we're trying to build is going to be this. When we sign in, again, this isn't pretty, but it's meant to demonstrate the concepts. So when we log in, we're brought to a localhost 3000 slash pets. It's got a list of all the pets. You can see here, I've got four pets. I've got Mark Hamill, Carrie Fisher, Tauntaun, and David Stinson. The pet has a name, a type, and an owner. There's also an age property. We, we can't see that. We're going to have to go to our show view to see that. Notice also, I know that it says I'm the owner of all these pets, but I have two different accounts. One of, they have two different email addresses, which you'll see here in just a second. If we go to user list, you can see that. Well, see, I've, all of you guys have signed up and logged in. So now I have users for all of you. All your email addresses are belong to us. So there's a list of users. If I click on a user, I can see all the pets for that user. Cool, huh? If I click on a pet, I can see that. I see the details. I see the age. Notice that this account is not the owner of that pet. But if I want to leave a comment, such David, click on the button. Now there's a comment, right? If I go to the user list and I pick the correct email address, these are, these are the pets that this user created. Notice now I have the edit button, so I can edit that pet. That only shows up if I'm the user that created that pet. Also, I can see all the comments. Also notice the kangaroo emoji on the comment button. Just thought I'd point that out. If I click on my pets, instead of all pets, it shows me just my pets. And it gives me the option to delete them. That's what the puffer fish emoji is for. I learned how to use emojis last night on, on Linux. It was exciting. Um, again, clicking on the pet will always take you to the pet details page. If you're the owner of the pet, you should be able to delete the pet. Add pet, simple. You just add the pet. That's, it's easy peasy, right? Again, if I go to all pets, it gives me the option of deleting a pet for which I am the owner of. So if I were to log out and log in as the other account, it would give me the option to delete either of those. And I'm going to delete David Stinson because he's not a burger. So do we all see what we're shooting for here? This is our end game for the app. Very simple. You kind of see what we're, what we're trying to get at here. We're going to have to index our users. We're going to have to index our pets. We're going to have to have a new pet page. We're going to have to have a my pets page. We're going to have to have a pet show page. We're going to have to have an edit pet page. So there's going to be a little bit of stuff we got to, we got to do for this, right? But this is, this is what we're doing. Let me shut that down. Fire this one back up and we can get started. Um, this is all we have so far. Where's, I just showed you the app. Where's a good place to start? Why don't we, you know, I'll tell you what, why don't we do this? Since this readme is useless right now, why don't we come up with a, a list of things to do in our readme? What's the first thing we want to do? Uh, create a new pet, right? Okay, that's going to have multiple steps, right? What's the first step for creating a new pet? Uh, create a schema for a pet. Okay. So let's start, instead of with creating a pet, why don't we stub up directories for resources. Then we can add models, controllers, routers. Probably a good next step, right? Because we got to do that before we start creating pets. We got to set everything up. We have to configure everything. 
passports configured already, our database is configured already. We don't have to deal with any of that shit, but we do have to make directories for controllers and uh, uh, we already have a model directory, but we're gonna have to stub some of that stuff up. So when creating our pet, that's a two-step process, remember? Update and create. Anything where we're pushing data to a resource is gonna be a two-step process. What's the first of those two steps? Render the new page. New page, new view, I'm gonna call it new view. And then handle post request. Cool, now that we have data, what's our next step? This is easy guys, come on. Index that data? Yeah, index, index view. Okay, then what? Once we have all of them showing, it'd be nice to get the details for one, right? Show view. Okay, then maybe we do delete functionality, then update functionality. So once we finish with that user, or once we finish with that CRUD model, let's do some other stuff. Then we got to deal with our comments, right? So where are we going to do our comments from? Comments are going to be on the show page, right? So add comment uh, UI. After we add the comment UI, we're going to have to add comment post route controller. Then that sounds good for that. I don't think we need to do anything else with comments. Once they're there, they're there. We're, we don't need to delete them. Then we have all these pets, right? We want to do our user index page. We could do that now if we really wanted to. That can go anywhere. We already have our users. We could index them now. That's easy. Or I guess technically we're already, no, we're not doing that yet, but we could because they're already there. They're, in, they're already in the database. So we have our user index page. User show page. We need a my pets page. Yeah, I love it. Uh, view. Your show page. Okay. I'm going to say view instead of page. Be appropriate. Hmm, that sounds like a, that's a, that's a good list, right? If we need to add to it or delete from it, we can go. We do that as we go. But you don't want to start coding before you have a list like this. Because if you do, you're just going to be doing stuff willy-nilly, and that's not how we write code. We have to have a plan. We have to have at least some organization. That is the shortest pseudo-coding you should ever do. Realistically, you should be step-by-stepping this stuff out. Use your, your wireframes and your ERD to say, okay, we got to make sure that when we are doing our delete functionality, that we limit that delete functionality to only user that created the uh, pet and things like that. Like you want to write those details in. I don't want this to take six hours, so I'm not going to do that. But that's where that stuff goes. The pseudocode that you were given for tic-tac-toe is beautiful pseudocode. The one that has like step three, step 3.1, 3 3.2, 3. Write that shit out and your coding will go so much more smoothly. Okay, so stub up directories for resources. Um, I'm going to put this in a repo so y'all can pull from it. So give me just a second here. Uh, I'm gonna put it in my personal. I'll just put it in my personal GitHub so we don't clutter up other stuff. SSH, bra. Cool. Uh, actually, 
let me add to the readme here with the instructions for pulling. Oh, let me do that. To fetch my code. Uh, get fetch all, get reset hard origin main. Add instructions. So if you want to add this as a, uh, add the ability to pull my code, who can, who can tell me what they think they need to type? Let's have a GitHub quiz. Git fetch origin me or uh, git fetch. To add, to add my remote, or to add uh, my repository as a remote. Uh, yeah, that's some of it. Git, let me type this out here. It'd be git remote add, because that's what we're doing. We're adding a remote. We're going to call it origin. And then a link to my repo. If you type that in, so you have to type git init first if you've already removed your. So type git init and then type that. I should have, let me update that. Where did you type that? that? I'm not seeing what you're talking about. In Slack. Oh, in Slack. Okay. Yeah. So you type git init and then git remote add origin. And then that, those two commands. And then you'll be able to do that, git fetch all, git reset hard origin main, which I will put here as well. Uh, would that work even if we created a repo for this already on our own GitHub? As long as you didn't call the repo, as long as you didn't add the repo as an origin. Oops. If you did, well, if you did, just type rm dash rf space dot git and do it again. Oh, okay. just remove the git info and do it again. Or you can just add bins as an upstream instead of an origin. Yeah, you could do that if too. you want to save this. Yeah. Okay. Anybody that will change the command you have to run, but. So after we make a, so we have to make a repo for our, uh, for our version of it and then add yours as like a remote origin, right? You're going to make a local repo. You're going to initialize it as a Git. You don't have to make a repository in the cloud for it. All you're doing is you're saying locally, this is going to be a Git repository locally. That's what you, that's what Git in it does. That's saying, Hey, turn this into a Git. When you say Git remote add origin, my link, you're, what you're doing is you're adding what's called a stream to that, a remote stream. So that when you type that git fetch all, git reset uh, hard origin main, you're pulling the code from all of your, all of your different streams and you're going to reset the code on the screen to whatever is in the origin streams main branch, which is my code. That makes sense. We're going to do a lot more GitHub stuff next unit. You guys are all going to be GitHub wizards because you're going to have to be. I can't wait. <laughs> I can't wait to learn yeah. more about GitHub because I feel like so lost every time I go on there. So that's been updated. Let's start knocking down the things on our list, right? Stub up directories for resources. We need controllers. What else do we need? That should be it, right? Just a directory for our controllers. Let's start getting some of the files. Add models, controllers, routers. So we're going to need to touch models slash we need pet.js. Do we need any other models? 
uh, user. Let me pull this up again. We already have that, right? We already have off. Oh, models, sorry. So take a look at this chart again and tell me if we need any other models. Whoa. No. No, because comments right. will. Why don't we need a comment model? It's embedded. It's embedded. Perfect. Okay. That was an easy question. Okay. So we have our model. Let's touch controllers. Uh, we need pets.js. We also need a pet router. So touch pets or router routes slash pets.js. We're going to need a views directory. So mkdir views slash pets. We can inside of that. We're going to need, we know we need index.ejs. We're going to need show.ejs. We're going to need edit.ejs. What else? New for a new, new one. And then remember the other example I showed you with the users, we want to index our users and we want to show our users. So we need an index and a show page for a user resource. So new folder inside of views, users, new file, index.ejs. file show.ejs. And what I like to do, assuming I know what all these different views are going to be ahead of time, that we're using partials, right? Why don't we stub up all of our partials now so that all of our pages are set up and we don't need to do that garbage later, right? Let's do it. Let's go into one of them and we'll just copy and paste it. So for a partial, squid flipping you off, we want to say include and then the path to the file and a string, which is dot dot slash partials slash header. Take that, copy, paste, and just change header to footer. Done. Now we're set. The other thing I like to do for my sanity check is I'm going to say, I'm going to put an H2 in here that says this is the edit view. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy all this. I'm going to go down here, paste it. Change that to index. Go to new. Paste it. New. That's a great idea. Here. Paste it. Show. Stub your shit up ahead of time. Label it so you can see what you're doing. Paste. This is the user's index. Paste, users, show. All of our views are set up now. How awesome is that? We don't need to do that shit later. They're done. Again, if you know what you're doing ahead of time, you can do that because you've thought about all of this. You know what all these different things are. These are all the things you're going to need. Just stub them up. That way you don't have to do it then. You're good. Let me push that. Uh, scaffold app structure. I love it. So let's go take a look at our list again. That's done. Add models, controllers, routers. 
we should probably go stub those up, right? So that, you know, things work when they're supposed to. So let's start with the controller. Our pets controller. Oh, we're going to need a user controller too, aren't we? I think we are, because we're going to have some user functionality we have to deal with. So let's do that too. New file, users.js. Start with the pets one. What's the first thing we always have at the top of every controller we ever write ever, ever, ever? Require the, or, or require the model. Model, okay. And our pets, we're probably gonna be using two different models, right? Because we're gonna need to access the users sometimes. So let's say const pet equals require. Dot, dot, slash models slash pet. And let's say const user. Oop, capital U equals require dot dot slash models slash user. What's the next thing we always have to put in here? The purpose of this controller. Module dot exports. Yep. Cool. Copy. Paste. That was easy. They're both set up. Routes. We also need a user router. So let's do that. New file, users.js. Okay. We can copy this up here. That's how we stub up our router. Let's go to pets and let's pop that in there. Module.exports equals router. What else do we need up here? Passport? Require the controller. Yes to the controller. What, why would you say passport, Nick? I don't know. <laughs> I guess it's just for authorization. We don't. It, you're right. It's just for auth that we're going to need that. So we're going to say const. Uh, one second here. Yeah. Oh. I got to fix that. I, got, I had a wonky line in my old code. So we're going to say const. This is our pets router. So pets control equals require our controller dot dot slash controllers slash pet. That's another thing we might want in here. This is relatively new because we've only we've we only done the, one thing with OAuth in it. Would we need the user's control for this because we're accessing it in the pets model as well? Maybe the is logged We're gonna in. have a separate controller. Yeah. We need this bad boy. There's that for you and Slack our custom middleware. That way we can tell our user if they're not logged in when they try to do something they shouldn't. Hey, you need to go log in first, yo. This is where our routes will live. We have that stubbed up. Copy. Let's go to our users. Paste. Only, we just need to change a couple things. Users controller, controllers slash users. Easy peasy. Then we have to tell our app how to use the, the different routers, right? We have to go put them in our server. Let's do it. Const users router equals require routes slash users const pets router equals require routes pets let's go down here 
add our router middleware. App.use pets will use our pets router. And users will use our users router. We've now stubbed up our routers, our controllers, uh, our routes, probably write the models next. Let me add commit and push this. I'll give a second for anyone who wants to pull. It's almost time to start our five-step cycle, right? Almost there. We just gotta go do some work on our models. Ben, so, because uh, of, yes, um, because of that organization, do you uh, is that how you say? No, he froze for it. We'll answer his question when he comes back. Yeah. Is there a reason why um, uh, I'm, I'm trying to just uh, browse to pet slash new and it's already giving me a 404 when I have that view there? Right. Do you have a route for it? I don't know. I guess not. Let's check our router and pets. We don't have any routes. Yeah. None, nothing should work. We will. I thought maybe I'll pull it up. We're just a, it's confused. Yeah. No, we, we created the view, but we haven't we haven't written a route for it yet. We're gonna do that when we start our five step cycle of UI, identify the UI, identify the route, write the route, code the controller, code the view. That's our five step process, right? So we'll start that with um, when we get to actually using our UI. We haven't gotten there yet. So the next step, probably a good time to start writing a model because we don't have that yet. So let's write out our, our, uh, our model. We're always gonna have the same thing up at the top of our models. Const mongoose equals require mongoose. Do we have mongoose in here yet? How do we know? Server. Have we installed package.json? Do what? In yeah. our package.json. Who can tell me without looking? Who can because tell me without looking if we you could have? You could auto-complete mongoose. Yeah, that's another, that's actually a very good point. But wouldn't we have to have mongoose installed to use OAuth? We have database shit going on. It's already installed, but I'll show you. It also has method override installed. So that's good. Is that configured too? Hot damn, that's configured too. We don't even have to touch that. Gotta love this template. Thank you, David. Oh, and he's not even here. I take that thanks back. Um, all right, so we're good with all this stuff, right? Let's, let's keep going on our model. Uh, const schema equals mongoose dot schema. And let's stub it up. Const pet schema equals new schema. And we said we wanted to give our pets a name. That's a string. We wanted to give our pets a type, string. And we wanted to give them an age, number. Is 
let's talk about the other things that we need to do. We need to have comments embedded, right? So we're just going to leave that open for right now. We're going to need to put something in there so we don't have a comment schema written. We're going to need to go and do that. And then we have to have our owner. Now remember, we don't want an array because we don't want a pet to have multiple owners. We just want the one owner. So instead of putting this inside of an array, we're just going to say type schema.types dot object ID referencing user. So that's saying when we put something in for owner, rec.body.owner has to be what? Has to be an object type uh, that references the user. So Which it needs to what? Uh, it needs to be someone who's like logged in and someone who has their data already in here. Right, but it's a string, right? I'm passing it a string, which is well, technically it's not a string. Technically, it's an, it's it's an ID, right? Yep. We have to pass it an ID, unless it's one of those little five E with like 15, 20 characters. Unless it's that, it's not going to work. It's expecting to have a mongoose ID, a document ID. So when we create our pets, we're going to have to make sure that we pass it that ID before we create it, because that's not going to come from our form. And we're going to talk to that about talk about uh, about that more when we get there. But you had to do that with flights too. When you reference the flight, you had to do rec.body.flight or rec.body.destination equals and then the destination ID that you're trying to push into that flight. Let's add timestamps before we forget. And then let's do our comment schema. Comment schema equals new schema. This one's easy. We're going to have posted by, which is a string, and we're going to have comment, which is a string. Let's give those timestamps too. Wouldn't posted by be the same like sort of object as owner? Because it's like it has to reference the user who's posting it. You could do it that way. Or what we could do is when we create a, a comment, what we can do is we can just say rec.body.posted by equals the name of the current user that's logged in. That way we don't have to use populate later. You could do it either way. If you wanted to reference the user here too, you could do that. But then you'd have to populate this every time that you're looking it up. And since we're nesting it inside of this document, probably don't need to do that. All I want is a string with the name. I don't need any of the other user's info. Here, it's nice to know more about the user, right? We can see more about the user for the pet that they own. But here, it would also be kind of well, wouldn't necessarily be redundant, but um, you could, if you wanted to set it up that way, you could totally set it up that way. I went with a simple example because I didn't want to overload you guys with referencing references. So that is a good observation though. So comments are going to live inside of, or comment schema is going to be right here inside of our pet schema. We also have to export it. You see, see how we got the linting here? It's like, hey, you're not using that anywhere. So we got to say module.exports equals mongoose.model. We're going to say what we're calling it, which is pet, and what we're actually exporting, which is our pet schema. That looks like a beautiful model. It's time for a push. FYI, when I'm adding, committing, and pushing, this is when you should be adding, committing, and pushing on your projects. It's not just because I think it's cute and I want you guys to be able to keep up. Like these are reasonable points to, to push. Every time I implement or write like a new big chunk of code or 
usable chunk of code or something that I can test and it works. I'm going to push. Uh, add model. Push. Cool. Let's go, look, go back and look at our list, see how we're doing. Add models, controllers, routers, done. Knocking stuff off the list. Create. You want to set head. up the user model first before creating a pet since it's going to be trying to take that information in? Oh, crap. It's already there. Great. Why is it already there? <laughs> because we're using uh, OAuth. Mm hmm Yay, template. Cool. Create a new pet. Render a new view. So we need to render a, a new view. You'll remember I had the nice little view. Oh, nice. I say nice. I had a link up here that says add a pet. So where, where do you think we'd find that in our code that I can go add a link for a new pet? The index view. Maybe the um, the new header if you're to add a new partials. Point. Header set up in a header, right? That's where our nav bar is in this example. So let's take a look at this real quick. We have if user. A tag, so a link to log out. Else, log in with Google. So where are we going to put, are we going to put it in section A or are we going to put it in section B? Our link to add a new pet. Section A. A. Oh, a. You have to be logged in. Yeah. Okay. A tag. Add a pet. I'm just gonna say add pet. What's the what's the route for that? Is it uh slash new? New, yeah. That's half of it. Slash, slash, pet, slash, slash. slash pet slash new. Use your charts. If you check that resource, the CRUD chart, new is a get request to the name of the resource slash new. That's going to return our view form. New is the controller function. Okay. So slash pet slash new add pets. Perfect. What's next? Create that route. Do it. Routes, pets, router dot get forward slash new is logged in. And then pets control dot new. Love it. Then we go into our controller function. New. We're going to say new pet function new pet All right res really simple in here what are we doing rendering the form love it render uh, that'd be what pets slash new Works for me. Let's see if it works. Refresh. Log in. Add pet. Uh oh. Title is not defined. Oh, let's, you know what? Go into your header and yeah. just delete that. <laughs> we're not going to, we're not messing around with that garbage. <laughs> Sorry, David. If you don't have a title, the tab just doesn't show anything. You don't have a title, you get that. 
Um, oh, oh, I see what you're saying. Wait, Change it to like a pet collector. Just... Yeah, that works. How about we do that? Yeah. So that it's not just. <clears throat> well, user is not defined. That's a problem, though. That's something. You logged in? It, it, did it, it didn't log you out since you were. Okay, let's try it. I'm still logged in. Uh oh. What do we need to do to fix that? We need to export user in the render. And our user is going to be what? User. Rec .user. Oh. Rec .user. user is going to be the user that's currently logged in. Love it. That's going to make us log in again because we just updated our server. But now we should see. This is the new view. Hey, it worked. That sounds like a time for a commit. Add new pet route. Okay. I'm going to save us the trouble of typing out forms uh, because I don't have time for that. I'm going to copy and paste them. Um, here is our. Oh, I'm just going to copy all of it. That's the entire code for uh, for the new pet view. Let's just paste that over there. And since all we've changed is HTML, we should just be able to refresh and see that form, which there it is, beautiful. We didn't change any server code. So I want you to see what we just did. We have a form. I can make that a whole lot bigger. So we have a form with a post action to slash pets, which is the proper RESTful route for this request three input fields. Two of them are type text, one of them's type number. We have name, type, and age. Those match up with our model. Placeholders, just because I didn't feel like writing labels and divs, like this is just the easiest way to do this, right? So we've got those three fields, those three inputs on a form. The form method is a post, because it's a post request, to slash pets. So this is all set up and ready to go. What's the next step? We've identified the UI, we've coded the UI, we write the route. Oh. So let's go to our routes. Pets. Router.post. What do I put in the for here? Forward slash. What's the just, just slash. forward slash, right? Okay, is logged in. Pets control dot what's the name of this function? Create. Beautiful. Let's go write it. Create. Function. Create. Mark res. Okay. What do we want to do in here? We want to create a pet with rec.body, right? Pet.create, so. right? Yep, like that body. But remember, remember what I said, in our model, our pet model, we're saying the owner is going to be the ID of the user that's creating the pet. This is coming in via rec.body from our form, as is this, as is this. Comments we're gonna deal with later in a different controller function. We have to send this into the object, into the, into the thing before we create it. If we don't tell it what the owner is, it's not going to, it's not going to set up referencing for us. It's going to leave that blank. So we have to tell it, Hey, the owner of the pet is this ID. So and the view. In our pet. Um, control. you could, 
you could put it in the view and just have an invisible field, or you could just take care of it here. So let's just say here, rec.body.owner equals rec.user.underscore ID. Right? We're just attaching that ID to rec.body as owner. Does everyone see why this is important or why this works and why we need to do it? If we try to create a pet without doing this, it's not going to know who created the pet because we're not telling it. We have to tell it. Just like Nandita said, though, if you wanted to, in that new page, you could have an input type text. Um, ooh. No. You couldn't because it wouldn't be an uh, it wouldn't be an object ID. It's a weird thing. I don't think you can do it with a text string because you have to create it as an object ID. So I don't think you could do that. So never mind that. Good thought though. Cool. So we've created our pet. Then what do we want to do? Redirect back to pets. Sounds great. Let's redirect back to our index view. We haven't written our index view yet, but we'll, we'll do that next. That's easy peasy. In fact, we've actually already, we have written our index view technically. We just haven't written a route for it. So that'll be easy. So res.redirect slash pets, because that's gonna be a get request to slash pets. Why don't we just go do that next real quick, right? Before we start creating pets so we don't get errors every time we create a pet, let's just redirect back to our index page. So let's do that. We already have the view for it, so that'll be easy. We have our route being hit here. That's our UI, it's automatically happening. So let's go to the routes. Routes, pets. Router.get forward slash is logged in, pets control dot index, right? Show all the pets. Controller, index, I'll push after I finish this one. Function index, rec res, then what? Show all the pets. Pets pet dot find. find. Yeah. Open bracket. Pet or pets? Pet. Pet. Find all. Oh, pet. 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 Yeah, pet find. Find. yeah. Open brackets. That finds all the pets. Love it. Then pass those pets. to our callback function, which we're gonna do what? Render, render. Um, right? Slash pets, oh no, not slash and a render. Oof, that would have been disastrous. Pets slash index. We need to pass a couple things to it. What are we passing to it? Uh, owners and pets, or users and pets. Right? Owners? Let's start with pets, low hanging fruit, get that out of the way. What do we need to pass to every page because of our nav bar? Title. title. We got rid of title. So. Rec user. User. Rec dot user. We have to say, hey, this is, who the, this is the user that's logged in. Because we're gonna be making logic checks, right? We're gonna say, hey, only display that edit link or that delete button if the current logged in user is the one that's the owner of that pet. So yeah, we need to pass the user there. Now, I heard someone say something else about owners. I'm intrigued, tell me more. I think I meant user, but for that pet, like oh, if we're indexing. Oh, they were right. 
You're well, allowed to roll with it. Pets, we want to also display who the owner of the pet is in that index, I right. think. Yeah. yeah, we do. You're right. But what does that exist as in our database right now? Um, it's just an ID. Uh, right? How do we turn IDs into documents? Uh, populate. Uh, populate. Yeah. So let's do that. Let's find the pet. Then after we find it, dot populate. Populate the owner field. That's it. That's our index function. Now when we pass our pets, each of our pets is gonna have that owner document in there instead of just the ID. I love it. Is um, come in and push? populate on 24, um, the owner in quotes, is that similar to like when we're in HTML and we name something like it has, it's it's the direct like syntax of the key value it is how it is in the model so okay, yeah. the quotes here with owner has to match this yeah, gotcha. and it and like dot populate is basically after It's, it has to come after the find before the dot then callback. And it's like it's doing dot populate on every pet? Yes. Like, okay, cool. That's so I was like, I don't understand how it can just sit there as a dot populate and know that we're talking about pets, mm -hmm. but we're finding every pet. It's adding dot to the end of it's that. It's magical. Pet. Yeah. Okay. It knows it. So what it's doing is it's what this does, this first command finds all the pets. Once it has all the pets or all the pets that we've specified in the, in the bracket, whatever condition we provide to it, after it's found all of those, it's going to go through every pet and populate that owner document or that owner ID with the document that it corresponds to that we've set up via referencing. And then it passes all of those pets, including all of those owners, to our render page. Or, or index view that we're rendering. So let's give it a let's give it a whack. Let's see if this works. Add pet. Banana is a monkey, and he's fourteen years old. Add pet. Okay. Banana the monkey. I love Does that it. Work. How do we know if that worked? We don't. Our index view doesn't list them out. Yeah, we haven't done any, any EJS. Right, we just need to, yeah, we need to list that stuff, right? So let's do that. I'm just going to give you the code for this. Um, that's pets index. Um, I'm going to give you some of the code for this. Tell you what, let's do this. I don't want to just copy and paste this because there's some really important stuff in here conceptually that I don't want you to miss. So let's do this. Let's put an H2. Where we're going to say all pets. Right. And then after we get done writing this, I'll give you the code so you can copy and paste over it if you want. But I want you to see what's happening here. We're going to open EJS and we're going to say pets dot for each. For each pet, I want to do something. Let's finish stubbing up our squid. Fix up our squid. And for each pet, I want to render something to the page. I want to render, why does it do that? Let's put an H2 with the name We'll say name is, and we can EJS out, pet.name. Uh, 
and maybe h3s. We'll say uh, type is ejs out pet dot type. And another one, h3 uh, is age pet dot age. Uh, and that, 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 that's it for right now. Uh, uh, the code I'm going to give you in a second will be a lot cleaner than that. But let's refresh and see what happens. Look at that. Oh, look at all those pets we've added. FFGS. Someone's you couldn't do better than Fine. that. FFGS. Come on, man. Turkey's a dog. I love it. Cool. I love it. All right. So our for each works, right? What if I want to put, notice that the, we, we don't have owner on here, do we? Why don't we put the owner too? Somebody tell me how to do that. Say I want to put that in an, another H3. Vice owner. What do I put inside of my EJS? to get that pet owner's name. Pet dot owner dot name? Can you, I don't think, can you access the username from there? There, yeah, Somebody there should be like a question. user name, right? In the user. Why? Because the uh, pet model populate. user. Yeah, because you're using the populate. Because we're populating, we have access to all of that information about the owner. We refresh now. We have our owner. And look, oh, look at that. All of your names next to your pets. Isn't that cool? Populate is the shit. Let's do one more thing. I want to add a button to delete my pet but only to delete my pet if I'm the owner of that pet. How would we approach this? If you were going to code this out, how would you do it? Would you say like if pet owner dot name is equal to own what uh, user ID or no, not name pet owners equal to user ID. Mm -hmm. You're on the right track. And you're, you're, you're actually, you're exactly right. But let's, let's back up a step. Let's start with the button. Put a button on the page. Delete. That way we can test this and see if it works, right? Refresh. Now there's a delete button next to each one. That's, we obviously, we're not going to do that. Um, we're, there's no functionality hooked up. But now we can move that delete button up. And again, just a delete button, it's not that big of a deal. But if you're using more complex things, like you want a form to show up or you want something to show up, put it on the page first and then move it inside of your conditional so that you can test that your code works for whatever it is you're trying to add to the page. Because if your code doesn't work for that, you're trying to put it inside of a conditional, then you don't know whether your conditional is working or not. So again, simple example, because who the hell doesn't know how to write HTML for a button? But point being, small, small baby steps. So let's go with what Patrick said. We're going to we'll do EJS. And we're going to say if you said what pet dot owner dot ID dot equals what? Uh, Rex user ID or you're on the right track. User, you, technically, user, you're right, but user ID. Current user or whatever. Why is, that? why is it user? Why is it user and not rec dot user? Because we're not submitting a form. Do we have access to the request object in our HTML? No. We don't. We have access to it here which is why on our index page, we're passing rec.user as user. So technically, Erica, yeah, you're right. 
it should be rec.user, but we can't access rec.user, which is why we had to pass it. So it's just going to be user dot underscore ID. So user dot underscore ID. Okay, so if that equals that, yada, 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 open up some squids. Da, 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 da. Close off the squids. We'll take a short break after we get done with this part. Uh, let's pop that delete button up there. Doop. Now we refresh and we should only see delete buttons for the pets that we've created. Now this is ugly, so I'm going to give you better code <laughs> for the inside of this. I mean, it's ugly either way, but this also has comments, which explain everything. And when we refresh now, you'll see that we have nice little lines and oh, oh a link, which is going to be our next step. I have a question, Ben. So sometimes like under, mm -hmm. so like in the one we did, we did pet.owner.id, it did the same thing. Hold on. Never mind. Okay. Let's take a little break. Um, I shouldn't have copied and pasted that because now you have two of these forms filled in already, but it's all right. Um, we're going to take a break. We'll be back in seven minutes and we'll keep going. Can you uh, push that? So um, what, what you're seeing here, the thing that we just copied and pasted um, has a little bit of extra stuff that we didn't talk about. Um, it's just the fact that we gave it a link around the name and that link is going to slash pets slash pet ID. So that's going to be our get request for our show view uh, for the pet. And we also added a form for the delete button instead of just a button. Um, and that is with an action of slash pets slash ID with a method override of delete on it. So those are the two things that we pasted and I forgot to mention before we did that. So my apologies on that. Um, also these comments, uh, all of the code in the repo that I will give you when we're done with this have comments like this everywhere, littered throughout the code, explaining what literally every single thing does. So feel free to use that um, for whatever it is that you want. Um, if you have questions as to what a specific line of code is doing, the answer is most likely there. So um, let's go back to our readme and check out the list of stuff that we've got to do. So we're done with that now. We've got to do our show view. So let's write that next. We could do delete functionality too, either or, right? Let's, let's do the show and then we'll do delete. Actually, I lied. Let's do delete first. Right? That's easy. We'll just get it out of the way. So delete. We're looking at our index view. We have our button set up so that buttons with the little blowfish buttons are only showing up for pets that we own. So we have a route here, slash pets, slash ID, method delete. So let's go write that. Let's go write that route and we'll write that controller function. Okay. Route, pets. What's our route gonna look like? Router.post. No? Oh, I thought we were doing delete. Oh. Method override. Well, I thought that that's why we did method override because it's a post. Right, we're overriding it to make it a delete. Okay. Cool. Is logged in. Pets control dot delete. Then we go into our controller. 
We have to write a function, delete a protected word. So we're going to say delete is actually delete pet. Function, delete, D-E-L-E-T-E, -E -E, pet, rag res. What's that going to look like? Pet, I'll, I'll give you the easy part, pet, dot. I'm by ID and delete. Love it. What's the ID we're passing it in? How are we passing the ID in? Rec params, right? Rec dot params dot ID dot then. We don't need to pass anything. Let's just redirect back to the page we were on. Res dot redirect slash pets. Our index page. Refresh, log in, and try it out. Delete's always easy. Oh, crap, we don't have a link to our all pets. We should probably do that. Let's go put that in the header. Uh, header. So right beneath here, put another li with an a tag in it to slash pets. All pets. And we can just refresh since all we did was change HTML. All pets, all pets. And I'm gonna go down and I'm gonna delete monkey the banana. Oh, that didn't work. What happened? 404. It's in the routes. Wasn't it supposed to be colon ID or do I have that wrong? Yeah. Mine is working. No, you have that right. We didn't write it. I didn't write it. Maybe you guys read it. I sure didn't. That was a rookie mistake. All pets. Delete. Redirects us, and now we're deleting pets. Look at all those pets. I love it. Cool. So delete's done. Add commit and push. Okay, back to our readme. Scratch that. Show view. We have a UI for it, right? That's on our index, our show view right here. It's a get request to slash pets slash colon ID. So let's go write it. Our route. Pets. Router dot get colon ID. He's logged in. Pets control dot what dot show works. Controller function show function show right res. What are we doing here? Uh, rendering the show page. Okay. I'll type that part out and then we'll type the rest of it. Oh. Render uh, pets slash show. Okay. What comes before that? Wait, we have to find the pet, right? Pet uh, find by ID. How do we find? Yeah, find by ID. Passing it in via rec.params. Dot then. We're going to pass that pet to our function with render in it. Got Still got to add a couple things. Now remember, if we want access to that owner, what do we need to do? Populate. Dot populate owner. Cool. And we got probably gotta pass some shit to render, right? 
User colon Tab. user. Yeah, rec.user, right? We're going to pass rec.user to everything because we're going to be doing logic text. It's always a good idea for these apps to just pass your user as rec.user rec .user as user to all of your views because you're going to be using it for everything. So if you're using auth, chances are every time you render a page, you're going to have this in it. I'm happy with that. So pets show. Uh, let's see if there's anything in here that I need to. Uh, there's comments, but I'll give you the code up until comments. Uh, let's do this. I'm going to copy and paste this over, and then we're going to edit the rest. One second here. So let's do this for now. So if we refresh, that should work. Refresh, we changed some server codes. So we gotta re-log back in. We got all pets, click on a pet, and it should give us the details. But now we need, to, we need to do some of these things where I have the comments in here, right? We're gonna need to only display a link to edit a pet if it belongs to the logged in user. And then once we're done with that, we're gonna come back later and deal with the comments. We're gonna get full crud on this pet before we start dealing with comments. So let's finish that first. So only display a link to edit a pet if it belongs to the logged in user. We saw that earlier, right? EJS. We're going to say if the pet dot owner dot underscore ID, because remember we did this, this uh, populate, we have access to the owners dot ID equals rec or not rec. Wow. I almost did that user dot underscore ID. If that's true, we don't even need an else here. We're just going to have it look like that. A quick question. Then, I noticed that some of the, like after you, the ID, you had an underscore for some of them and then some of the other ones you didn't. I just wanted to know the difference. Where would I have not used an ID or an underscore? Um, There's a very clear, very clear difference between the two. Would it be in the params? Yes. Anything dealing with params. So in our controller functions, yeah. We're never going to have dot underscore ID. That's the only place you're not going to have them. Params are like for like the links. Every other time. Yeah. Right. It's the URL parameters. So it's uh, in our routes here. That's what this is. And it's referring underscore. to this ID. Okay. And, and then the underscore is just the document object ID. Oh, okay. okay. Thank you. Which is assigned to it by Mongoose. So yeah, or Mongo, technically. Cool. So if that's true, then we're going to display a link. All we need is a link for this, and it's going to be to edit the pet. So we can say edit, and let's make this dynamic. Let's make that link change based on uh, the pet's name. So instead of saying edit pet, why don't we say edit, and then EJS out pet.name. be able to refresh and see that edit mark hamill cool only if it's your pet if you pick somebody else's pet no edit link cool shit 
Okay. So now what is our link? What, what is our route for editing? Slash edit. Colon ID slash edit. Mm -hmm. We have to have the pet ID. Slash edit, right? Because we have to tell it which pet to edit. So that's our link. Takes us to pets ID edit. It looks good to me. Let's go. Let's go get our router set up for that, right? Routes, pets, router dot, uh, sorry, get slash colon ID slash edit is logged in. Pets control dot edit. And then all we're doing is rendering that pet that we look up to a page, right? Edit. On our chart, this is another one of those non-restful routes. All we're doing is re returning a form to edit that pet. So we go down here, function, edit, rec res. What do we need to do in here? Just find, find the pet by ID. Love it. Okay. Then what? Pass it. Could it be fine by IP and update? Who can answer that? Uh, I think so. Right? I don't think it matters, right? What? What's the purpose of this controller function? The purpose of this controller function is rendering a view with our form on it. We're not updating here. We're all we want is a, a form on the page that says, Hey, here are the pets details, push this button to update. And then we're going to do the find by ID and update. Uh -huh. So this is one of the two step processes. Remember anytime we are essentially putting data into the database, either posting or putting where we're going to do a put request for this because we're updating data. Any of those two times, we want to make sure that we're doing a two step request. The first step, like your chart says here, your first step is one of the additional common non-RESTful CRUD routes. When we're creating a form to either make a new item or to edit an item, the first thing we have to do is a request, a GET request to show a form for that. The reason that we have to look the pet up is because we're going to populate the form with the current values for that pet. And then so after we're going to render. Right. right, we're going to do the update next. So res.render pets slash edit we're going to pass to that the pet that we just found via our query and our user and our edit all we have is this is the edit view let me get you some html for that this one's easy i'm going to copy and paste this Put all that in there. We'll talk about what we got. Can you, back, can you go back to your route real quick? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sorry, the controller. I'm sorry. So our edit function is just finding the pet by ID and then rendering it to the edit page. Gotcha. We're passing the pet, we're passing the user. So now if I go to all pets, the pet that I own, I should, should see the link show up, I hit edit. It's gonna populate that form with the values that I've currently entered. Nothing new. 
right? The only difference between this and the new function, new, we just showed a form. We don't have to look up any data because there's no data to be looked up. It's just, hey, put a form on the page. The reason we have to do pet.findById here is because we're saying, hey, I want you to find the details for this pet and populate our form with those details. That's why in this edit view, we have these value fields for our input tags. And the values are pre-populating those fields so that our user doesn't have to re-enter the name of their pet. That would be annoying and tedious. Can you push your code? And then we're gonna, yeah. Uh, I'll do it when we get done with this method. We got one more. Sure. Actually, I guess this is a good place to push. Taught. Oops. Sorry. Um, so we have our form. The form has an action. We're overriding the post method to be a put. Right? This is where our update's going to happen. Look at our chart. To update, it's put patch to name of the resource slash colon ID update right here. So that's our next step. So we have the route pets ID method put. It's going to send this, turn this into rec.body and send it to our controller function. So routes pets router dot put slash colon ID is logged in, pets control dot update. Okay, let's go write the update controller. Back down, function update, rec res. Passing it the ID, so now we're gonna use find by ID and update. And remember, this takes three arguments instead of the normal one. First thing is the whatever it is we want to search for to update. And we're passing that in with rec.params.id. The second thing is what we want to update it with, rec.body. The third thing is little object here, parameters new, true. You just have to do that for find by ID an update to work. One thing that's going to be an issue with this is the same thing as before with our owner. We're not going to have rec.body.owner. So is that going to override the owner of our pet? How's that going to work? Let's try it out. Let's see. Let's dot then. We don't need to return anything we're going to res how about we redirect back to that pets details res dot redirect slash pets slash uh got to do template literal here slash pets uh the you know what we can return pet and we'll do pet dot underscore id here So let's see what happens if we do this and update our pet. All pets, Mark Hamill, edit. I'm gonna make him 47, save pet. That still works, the owner's still the same. So we don't need to put an extra line there. Make sure it still says that. Yeah, it doesn't change our owner. So values are not gonna be overwritten. Remember in our create function, we had to do this rec.owner, rec.body.owner equals rec.user.underscore ID. If that value is already there, we don't have to put it back in when we update. And we don't want to update that. 
So technically, yeah, we should just leave that off. That's, this looks great. That's full crud, right? Yeah. So we got full crud on our on our pets. Let's keep going. Let's go take a look at packet our readme here. So would this be uh, done? We have to just do it in our unit one, our unit two assessment. This is like head and shoulders above what you will need to do in your unit one or unit two assessment. Uh -oh. This is like way more than you're going to need to do in your unit two assessment. Okay. Yeah, way more. You're not going to have referencing and embedding in that. Technically, you don't even need to use Mongoose. Though you should to make it easier on yourself. Um, but yeah. If you follow along with everything I've done, you're going to blow that assessment out of the water. Like, that's should be nice and easy for you. So why don't we next do our comment UI, right? We'll be able to. Uh, would you mind pushing we'll your code, these, please? I just did. Uh, oh, sorry. I, I just broke mine. I have no idea what I did. Thanks. It's all good. So let's do the comment stuff next. Then we'll go back to these last user routes because those those are going to be easy. Same thing with the my pets view. That's going to be easy. This is the this is the more complicated stuff that deals with embedding. So we're going to have to do that next. So add comment UI. Where do we want to add comments? We want to add comments on our show page. So let's go back over to our pets show page. Look at that. We have a nice little comment there, ready to go. Form for adding a comment via a post request to pets slash colon ID slash comments. That matches our chart. Get request slash comments, right? That's going to get all of them. If we want to post to them, it would be a post to posts ID comments or pets ID comments, right? So we can do that. Let's put a form in here. Form. Action, what did we just say it was? Slash pets, slash we need ID. So EJS out. And it was pet.id slash Comments method equals post works for me. What do we need in here? Two things we need an input and a submit. Remember, take a look at our model here. Oops, model. Wow, so blind. There it is. All we have to have is posted by and comment. Posted by, we can access that on the back side, right? From the back end. Let's do that there. Just take care of it in the controller function. That way we don't have to build extra HTML into our site. I would much rather write something in JavaScript than HTML. So that's, that's how I'm gonna do it. But we need to add this comment. That's the, the input field so that the user can enter a comment. So let's go back over there, show. I have an input field. Type is text, name, comment. Let's put a button. We'll call it add comment. Type is submit. If you want, you could put a little kangaroo on there. Little kangaroo on our button. Cool. So now we got a form for adding a comment via a post request to pets ID comments. Pets ID comments. 
Next route. Wait a minute. New resource. Sign the alarm. That needs a new router. Could you do this on the pets router? Yeah. Would it be bad to do it on the pets router? No. But we're going to set this up so that we don't have to do that. So we're going to go create a new router because we want all of our routers to, you know, all of our resources to be routed using individual routers. So we're going to do, well, let's create it up here. The same reason why we had the oh, reviews so. router, right? Like for our other project? Correct. Mm -hmm. uh, this will be comments router equals require dot slash routes slash comments. We need to create that. So let's create that real quick. Comments.js. Sorry. So we have comments router requiring our route. And then down beneath here, we're going to put it right here. Now this is where things get a little tricky. App.use. What am I going to put here for the path? It's in it. There are two good answers yeah. to this question. It's embedded in pets. Yeah, it's in it pets. It's so it's pets, right? Okay. It's, pets yeah. ID. You could use pets or you could leave it blank. Okay. If you put pets here, which is what I would choose to do, then inside of your router here, you're going to use slash colon ID slash comments as a post. If you wanted to leave this blank, inside of here, you do slash pets slash colon ID slash comments. Either way works. Point being, this should not be comments because it's using that pets. Remember our route is slash pets slash ID slash comments. So the pets, pets is what I would go with. So let's go stub this router up. I'm just gonna copy code from another router. So I don't have to type all that out. Actually, I'm gonna copy it from one that has our is logged in function here. Got to change the controller. Which controller are we gonna use here? Pets? Or... Yeah. yeah, we're gonna use our pets <laughs> controller. We don't have a comments controller. We don't need a comments controller. Well, you know what? Let's make a comments controller. Just to be just to be consistent. We, if we have a separate router, we'll make a separate controller. That's only fair. So we're, we need to bring in our pet equals require model slash pet and we probably need to bring our user in module dot exports equals cool so that's stubbed up we can go back to our router let's finish writing this let's just do this const Comments, comments, control equals require controllers slash comments. I like that. I like that better than not having a comments controller. So we said it was what? A post request, request right? Router dot post to slash pets, which we already have, slash colon ID slash comments. Cool. Middleware. Comments control dot. What do we want to call it? Comments. We're creating a post, right? Uh, so yeah, create we're creating. 
probably probably your best bet. You could call it add comment if you wanted, but creates probably your standard for what you'd want to do. If you were going to put this inside of your pets router, I would most definitely call it add comment. But because we separated it out just for an extra example, we're going to call it create. And that's what we're going to put over here. Module.exports create function create rec res. Okay. So how do we do this? Nested resource. Would it be common? The first thing we need to do. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. First thing we need to do before we do anything is find what? The, where are you going to post it? Like the, the animal that you want to comment. So the pet uh, ID, you need to find a pet ID and then. <clears throat> cool, pet, find by ID. Rec dot, we're passing that in, rec.params.id. Cool. Then we'll pass that pet to a callback. Then what? Don't we want to uh, grab the comment schema? So we want to do comments.create or something? Or I'm not, I'm not sure if that's correct, but no. <laughs> if it were referencing, it, no, it's a good thought, right? You're thinking about creating a resource, which is what you want to be doing. But that's how you do it with referencing. When you're embedding something, remember in our model, we said that our comments are right here. It's just an array. This, the comment schema, it already knows. Our pet schema already knows what a comment is. It knows okay. what the data structure looks like and everything. All we have to do is push this data into the array. So we're going to say pet.comments.push, and we're going to pass in rec.body. Ah. It. Embedding, you just want to push it into an array if that's how you have it set up. So we'll say the pet that we returned, the pet that is the result of our query, comments.push rec.body. Then pet.save dot then we return it and we're going to res dot what? res.redirect back to that pet so we can see the comment we just posted? Uh, nice I pets. thought in create, do you not need, don't you not need to save it? Like, doesn't it automatically save? Where do you see create in there? Oh, oh no, if you're using the dot create method, oh. not in a create function. Okay. So if I said pet dot create, that automatically creates and saves a pet. Okay. But we can't do that. We can't do comment.create because it doesn't know what comment is. It knows what pet.comment is. And we can push that information into that array. There's only one problem with this. So let's like take a look at that model again. Uh, we have two different properties in our comment schema. We have posted by, where we want the name of the person that's posting, and we have comment. Comment, you'll remember, is right here. We have the input for that. So rec.body.comment is taken care of when that form is submitted. We don't have rec.body.posted by. So we need to add that. So, before we push, let's say rec.body.postedby equals, and how do I get the name of the logged in user? The user ID. The what? The user ID. If I want their name. Oh, uh, so rec.user.name? Yeah, rec.user.name. So what this is going to do is whoever's logged in at the time, it's going to set their name. It's going to set rec.body.posted by equal to their name. 
then it's going to push that along with the comment info that's already on rec.body into that, that schema, that embedded schema that we have set up. Then we save it, then we redirect. Could you show where now, posted by was again? Sorry. Uh... Sure. It's in the model. So if we look at our model, part of our schema that we're pushing comments into, every comment is going to have a string of whatever the comment is, like, oh, such a cute dog. And it's also going to have posted by. Posted by is going to be the name of the person posting the comment. So okay. the two options that we have for that are if we want to put it, build it into this form, we can say here, input and just leave, make, make an invisible input and say the name of that would be posted by and the value of this field would be user.name. Or since I hate writing HTML compared to JavaScript, I'm just going to take care, take care of it here. And I'm going to say rec.body.posted by equals rec.user.name. I have access to rec.user. We'll just pull the name off real quick before we throw it in the array. So now if I go to a pet and I want to put a, a, a comment in there like uh, strong name, legendary. Add comment. Okay, looks like our post went through to pets ID comments. We just need to render those comments on the page now and then we're done with this step. Right, let me push. So let's think about that. We want to show them on the, the show page for the pet. So we need a for each loop to display the comment and the user that posted it. Do I have to do anything special to our comments or to our uh, show function? Let's take a look at the show function here for our pets. Right here. Do I need to do anything special here to access all of the comments? Pass it comments. Do I? I where, guess do, where do comments exist? That's inside the pet. Yeah, they're all inside the pet. All that data, because we're using embedding and not referencing, that full document is already in there. We don't need to populate anything. It's just it's just there. The comment and posted by is already inside of that pet, so we don't need to adjust any of this. We just need to render it on the page, which that's just a simple for each loop, right? So would it be like uh, pet.comments.foreach or, or no, just? Yeah, exactly, okay. exactly. So let's do it, EJS, pets, or no, excuse me, pet, because it's singular, okay. dot comments, dot for each. We'll call each one comp C for comment. Stub it up. Clean up our squid. And let's say, uh, let's put it all in one H4 tag. And let's say the comment, so EJS out. Oh, is it not doing that? Let me type it manually then. Okay, EJS out. So we want c.comment. We'll put a little hyphen. EJS out, c.name or C dot posted by. And if we refresh, all of our comments pop up. Oh, look at that. Is that one of your computers? What was that beep? Oh, I think it was an Amazon guy dropping off a package. So if this was like a reference, words. if this was a referenced, uh, um, uh, if for like owners, like, or if comments, for instance, was for any reason referenced, like, how again would we, um, if they were referenced, 
yeah. that be stored in the document as what? I'll go to the model here so you can see it. If we're referencing something, we're storing it in the model as an object or as a object ID. Object ID. Right. So if you look at your data for something like that, let me find something that I've referenced. Uh, so favorited by. This is referencing a user object, but all we see is the ID because we're referencing it. So what we have to do to turn this into usable information is populate. Populate turns this into a document that has all of the information for that, all of the fields for that. Okay, so we would have sense. populated in our, con in our controller function for that and been able to use exactly. it then in the form. Okay. Exactly. Cool. So I just pushed. Just one more look at our README here. Those are done. User index view, user show view, and my pets view. These are, these are easy, right? Our user index view, let's start with the UI. If I wanna view all users, let's go to our header, put an LI in there with an A tag, href, we'll just say slash users. That's the default route for index view, right? All users. What's next? The route. We have slash users already in our, our route. We already have our, our router set up for that. So we're going to go to routes because we did that when we started. So we go to routes. We already have our controller stubbed up. Man, this is fantastic. Having all this shit ready to go for us. Uh, router dot what get forward slash is logged in. Users control dot index. All right, let me go over to our controller. Already stubbed up, love it. Index. Function index, rec res. What are we putting here? We're finding all the users, right? And we're displaying them here? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so would it be user dot find is it find all or just find? Uh, oh, then the brackets, yeah. Yep. Dot then, users, arrow function. I'm gonna res dot render our user index page. Users slash index. What are we gonna pass to it? U users uh, colon rec user. Two things. We want or, to pass all of the users as users, and we want to pass user as rec.user. Right? This is the same thing we're passing to all of our renders. This is the result of our query. So just like if we were finding details for a pet, it'd be pet.find and then the specifics. We have to pass the pet to the page. We have to pass all the users to the page to the view. That's all we're doing here. So users index. I'm going to copy and paste this for you. This one's really simple. It's just a for each loop. Users dot for each each user. I want a link with their name. And I want their email address printed out. So if we refresh this now, why did my UI not show up?
Oh, <laughs> wow. I can't believe I did that. I put that in the wrong space. There we go. Sorry. All users. There's all my users. You'll notice that the link that I set up for that is going to slash users slash user ID. What is that going to go? That's going to be our show, right? That's a, a route for our show to get requests to slash users slash colon ID. Let's code it out. Router, users router, router.get slash colon ID is logged in. Users control dot show. And we go to our controller. Show. Function show. Rec res. This is or this one's going to get a little tricky because remember I want to show all the pets that belong to that owner. So let's start start with what we know. We have to find the user. So user dot find by ID. We know that's being passed in rec dot params dot ID. Then pass that user to a callback function. We have the user. So we know what the user is. Then we have to find the pets that that owner has. So what we can do is using our pet model, we can say pet.find. I want you to find me all the pets where the owner is user dot underscore ID. So that's going to look at all of the pets and return every single pet where the owner field has the ID of the currently or of the user that we just searched for. So if I click on Sebastian's name, it's going to find him because it's going to look him up by ID. And then it's going to say, okay, find me all the pets where the owner is the same ID as Sebastian. And it'll list all of Sebastian's pets as what we put here. Dot n pets arrow function. Now we have access to pets. So we have user and their pets. So there's dot render. How about our users slash show? We're going to pass to that. We know user rec dot user because always we're going to pass the user that we searched for and we're going to pass the pets that belong to that user. Right? Easy, easy peasy. You can't be afraid of these like specificity when inside of these things. This is what tripped me up is I never wanted to do this. I never wanted to say, oh, I don't know. I don't know what the syntax is. Don't be afraid of this. This is just saying, find me all the pets, all the pets where the owner is this. And you know, owner is going to be a document ID and it's going to be of a user. So it's just user dot underscore ID. This shit used to terrify me when I was learning this stuff. That's normal. So that, that looks great. Now we just need a user show page, right? We just have this garbage. So let me give you what, what I got for that. Let's refresh and see what it looks like. So now I click on all users. I click on Sebastian. Oh my God, Sebastian, you got a lot of pets. <laughs> did, I, did I just get Rick rolled? That's yes. awesome. Notice that what we did here is we also put an href on the pet names so that if we click on that, we can see the details for that pet and say, uh, and we're gonna turn around and desert you.
See that? We're good. We're looking good. One last piece. The last one's going to be easy too. Uh, add user uh, show page. So the last thing I want to do, our last step is I want to see my pets when I click on a link that says my pets. So I want, I want to find, the, find me, the, the currently logged in user, and display all of the pets that I own. So if we were to do that, start with the UI, always, header, li, a, what do we want to call this route? We have no previous definition of anything close to this. This, this is an uncharted path, right? We haven't had an example like this before. We can do whatever we want. So this will be like, could it be There's like the user ID? Syntax. Well, we, we have that, you know, we, we already have the user ID for the, the pets. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say slash pets because it's dealing with the pets resource, right? Slash mine. I do what I want. Slash mine. doesn't matter what I put here. I'm just going to make something up because there's not a convention for that. And I wanted to demo this by showing you that that's okay to not have, if you don't have it, it just has to make sense. If it were a slash pets slash banana, that would be bad. But slash pets slash mine indicates that it's going to show the pets of the mine, the person that's logged in. My pets. So let's go to our pet router and write that out. Router pets. Uh, that's a get request. Now here's here's a tricky one for you. If I do this, dot get slash pets slash mine. Pets control dot uh what did I call it in my I want it to match the code that I put in here. Uh, it gives a silly name. <laughs> I called it index mine. Okay. Uh so we're just gonna say index mine. What's wrong with the way that I have this as it's written? Not as it's written, but maybe where it's positioned. Remember, as our routes hit, they're going to go down this sequentially. And if we type in slash pets slash mine, when we get to this get request, it's going to think slash pets slash mine. It's going to think slash mine is an object ID. So it's not going to work. So this has to go somewhere above that. The way that I like to keep these organized when I'm writing code is I like to keep all of my get requests nestled right next to each other. All of my post requests beneath that deletes and then puts so that I can see them like, yeah, new, doesn't, that works. Realistically, that should go up there. Doesn't the order matter or something like that? I've, yeah, it totally matters. So this if we work, like... that won't. Yeah. Because slash mine, if you type slash pets slash mine, and this is above, it'll hit this route thinking that the ID is a string M-I-N-E. We don't want that. But if we put it down here, slash pets slash mine will hit this before it gets to this. And the only thing that's going to get to this is something with an ID on it. Those errors suck to troubleshoot. Yeah, that confuses me a lot now. <laughs> you just think of it as, it, you're, it, it's going to think of it as a param. When you type in slash pet slash mine into the browser, if it's, if it's down here, it's going to, okay, it, does it match this? Slash pet slash mine. No, this is just slash pets. This is slash pet slash new. 
This is slash pets slash gimme what's ever after the slash. So it's going to say rec.params.id equals mine. So we go in and that it's going to run order. your share function. I would go in, yes, in order from, of how deep the route. Or shallow to like always or deep. Yeah. That's a great way of putting it. I would always try to keep your anything with a colon ID towards the bottom of your of your gets. Just so you don't get conflicts. Okay. If you have another slash, that's okay. Like slash ID and slash ID edit. It knows the difference between those two. Okay, thanks. Fun stop. Yeah. Okay, so we have that. Uh, index mine. Let's go write that function and be done with this. Pets. Index mine. Function index mine. Rec res. I want to find all my pets. How do I find all of my pets? Pet. Uh, uh, that do this one. Pet. Uh, oh. Pet that finds, and then uh, parentheses bracket. Uh, and then I'm gonna be pet. No, you, you're finding oh. all the pets to you yourself uh, that you have saved, right? So it would be. Um, Take a. Take a look at, uh, well, I guess I think it's in the user user gonna really show you that. control or it's, it's in the, it's in the users. User. Yeah, owner colon user dot. Uh, so, so the pet that's to the owner. Okay. So, right. So I'll start you off with this. I'm going to type that out. So I'm going to say, find all the pets where the owner is, is what? Um, the owners. So How do we get that, the ID of the logged in user? Rec uh, ID or huh. rec user dot ID. ID. Okay. Cool. So that finds all my pets. Then pets arrow function. Here's another fun little trick. We already have an index view, right? Can we reuse that? Yeah, That's fucking lootly. With different things, Let's right? do it. I'm not writing a new view for that. Res dot render. Uh, pets slash index. Pass to it the same things we need to pass. We need to pass it to pets. We need to pass it user. 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 Isn't that hot? reusability we're totally reusing that index to do something completely different instead of indexing all the pets we're indexing the pets for the user boom my pets my pets this is what we're going to be doing in react the reusing components we're using we're going to have components that can be recycled and used for multiple things so hot, so efficient. It's so wild to me that when you render that file, like I, I, I get it, but it's weird to see it in action that like we're reusing that pet slash index, but the browser is still pet mm -hmm. slash. Like that's cool, but also like, oh, <laughs> like, okay, I get it. Well, that it, it, Nick, I'm glad you said that because what that does is that shows you that this isn't what's being rendered. This is the path. And yeah. this is what's being rendered. Yeah. It, that, that also took me a while to like wrap my head around that. Yeah, but once you get over that, once you realize this is just a file name, this has nothing to do with what's in your, in your browser path. A lot of the times they look the same, right? You're going to have edit and that. You're going to have, you, you got to get over that. You got to just remember, this is a file. This is your route. This is your path to your route. Mm. And that way, since we're on pet slash index already, like our delete button functionality works the exact same way it would. And exactly. like all the stuff just works the way that we've already built it. 
Mm-hmm. That's Make. nuts. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Pretty sweet. Let me update uh, one thing. I'm going to push this code with all the comments. Uh, I'm going to give you guys a link to the pet collector code that I put on GitHub that has all the comments. This one is the one that we did together, but this one. Mongoose Airlines, sorry. So this has comments for everything in each of the files. So for your controller functions, I have comments showing every single like, hey, this is what this is what we're doing. This is why we're doing it. So I went and commented literally everything. Thank you. So let me get get you a list for that repo because this is I if I had this, I would have been a much happier person when I was taking this course. I didn't have Game Goose either. I had flights. In movies, that's it. It's a sad day. <laughs> so you guys have that now. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. You guys have any other questions before we I have wrap this up? There's only seven of us here. Hey, Tyler's back. Hmm. I thought there were more. I I I, I don't I don't unmute. That that's that was, um, I was talking. What? <laughs> no, not not during the lecture. I wasn't listening in on that. But I was trying to talk to him. I just don't unmute all. Um. Question, Ben. Um, <laughs> has uh -huh. to do with my unit one. I posted it on uh, on the support channel during the break, but, and uh, I never ended up getting like back to it until now. It's some weird CSS. I know you don't like CSS, so I don't know if I should just refer to David or if you want to take a look at it. I think that's a great opportunity to go use your support channel TA, Sam Gimberling, who is awesome oh, at CSS. Okay. Yeah, I'm overdue for a haircut out in my living room. So <laughs> are there any other is she uh, on right now? I, I went no. to Sam uh, with the same problem, but we couldn't figure it out. Sam G? Yeah. Oh, yeah, if you couldn't figure it out, then I would ask David. Yeah, yeah. all right. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. Yeah. It's not that I don't want to do CSS right now, but. I get it. No, I get it. All right. Thank you so much. Thanks for the Thanks. lesson. Bye. Bye. Yeah. I'll, I'll post this here in a little bit. Cool. Thanks. See you guys.